As artists, our lives sometimes revolve entirely around our work and our self-esteem depends way too often on the popularity and quality of the work we produce. This can influence our day-to-day -day mood and even throw us into bad moods when the work is not at the quality we expected it to be. In this video, I want to talk about how you can detach from your work and how this can make you even better. So when we get too attached to our art, we can become overly critical of ourselves. We may feel that the quality of our work is a reflection of our worth as a person and that if it's not perfect we are not good enough and that's not true the first thing that you need to remember is that your work is a reflection of your growth as an artist but you are not just an artist i made a video about this very subject earlier on my youtube channel and talking about how you are not just an artist you should have other things in your life that you need to take care of like your social skills or your physical health for example and having other hobbies on other passions in your life is going to help you detach from your art and to not overthinking too much of course you may have heard a lot of the stories of artists that were the best in art history like Van Gogh or Leon Decker or Norman Rockwell they neglected anything else in their life there was only art in their life me honestly I don't want to be like that because they were emotionally and mentally unstable and I just don't want to be like that I really believe that you need to take care of other things in your life as well as art do not neglect art in any way but keep in mind that you are a human before an artist also you should try to approach your art as a process rather than a product focus on the journey of creating your art rather than the final product. Now, don't get me wrong, final product is extremely important, especially if you are working for someone else. I try to, for every image that I create, give myself some technical challenge of something that I've never done before. Like, it could be as small as using a brush that I've never used before, or using a new technique, or using a new color, or trying out a new composition, try to uh, focus more on the storytelling, trying to focus more on the contrast, stuff like that, that can help you get better because you will experiment a lot more and you will focus more on the process rather on the final result by doing that. I think you should set boundaries for yourself and let go of perfectionism and remember that it's okay if your art doesn't turn out exactly like the way you envisioned it in your head. You should embrace the imperfections and the mistakes and use it to learn and to grow. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Because I think that if you focus too much on the image that you visualized in your mind, you will become very stiff and your focus will 100% be to recreate the image that's in your mind and you will never be happy with what's on paper because it will never be exactly the same as what's in your mind. So I think you should have a rough idea of what you want in your mind, of course, but be open-minded to what's happening on your canvas and see the opportunities that arise to you as you work. You could also share your art with people that you trust to give you some good feedbacks and sometimes those feedbacks are going to be hard to swallow or hard to hear because you will have to rework some part of your painting that you put a lot of time and energy in but it's for the greater good of your image. Sometimes the face of your character in your painting doesn't work at all and the people that you are going to ask for feedback are going to tell you that and you will resist it because you don't want to repaint that face that you put already three hours in most of the time like 99% of the time if you start that phase again you will take twice as less time and you will have a much better result. So there's a saying that I heard uh, some artists say in a, in a video, uh, they were saying that you need to be able to kill your babies. That's a skill that you need to have as a painter. And that means that you have to be able to let go of what you already have done and you need to be able to erase and start over again on a whim uh, without thinking too much about it and without being too, too attached. Because in the end, the final result is going to be much better. And this is true especially as a concept artist because if you are working on a pre-production for example for a video game 80% of what you create is going to be thrown away because of any reason possible on earth it doesn't mean that your work is bad it might just be some reasons in the, the production maybe the, the story of the video game changes maybe the artistic direction changes and there are so many reasons that are possible for your work to be thrown away if you want to be a concept 
concept artist, you need to be prepared for this because most of the work you are going to do is not going to be used. Another aspect of your art that you need to detach from is your style. So you should not identify yourself to your style too much, even though that's a way of people to recognize your work. I think that people change, that artists' tastes change, and sometimes when we have too strong of an aesthetic, we might feel obligated to keep doing that over and over again. And especially if you build an audience or a following on social media, you might feel trapped in that aesthetic. And if you ever want to experiment or try new stuff or try a new style, you might be scared to do that because your audience might not like it. And that's actually what happened with the famous artist Dave Raposa. In the beginning, he got known by doing uh, some very, very realistic and detailed portraits of the Ninja Turtles. But after that, he decided to focus more on his drawing skills and uh, with Steve Lichman, his comic book, he changed his style completely and some people didn't like it. He got a lot of backlash from that. But after a while, people accommodated to it and they started to like his work again and now he's one of the most popular artists there is. And all of this to say that you should not feel trapped by your style or an aesthetic. If you want to experiment or try something new, you should do it and uh, don't even feel obligated to, to post it if you don't want to. But uh, I think it's important to experiment with new stuff if you want to do it. So don't be scared of what people are going to think of you or of your work. You do you and you do what you want to do because in the end that's all that matters. And keep in mind that the work you do now might not have anything to do with the work you do in five years because your tastes are going to change, your, you are going to grow and you should not stress about it too much. Also, if you are too attached to one painting you do and you are so proud of it that you consider it the best painting you do. I had this case in art school when I was just starting to paint in gouache. One painting that I did, which now is absolutely awful, I will try to, to find it again. I thought it was the best painting I could ever do and I was very stuck on it. And the next images that I did, I was not happy about them at all. I was discouraged. I was like, I'm never going to do another good painting like that. And this can be very toxic for your mind because it's like someone that has 15 minutes of fame and that's trying to chase it over and over again by recreating it. You cannot do that. So you just need to keep creating. Don't stress too much about it. And it's important to remember that art is meant to evolve and change over time. And by letting go of your attention, Attachments, you can open yourself up to new growth and new results as an artist. So I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.